What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Personal Perseverance Project. I am so excited to come to you today with today's message, and that's my mindset is my superpower. But before I dive into that and I give you 10 key points to what I feel contribute to my mindset being the way it is, which I kind of call my superpower, I just want to say I hope everybody got to listen to last week's episode with Trooper Richard Matson. I hope that if you haven't, you go back and listen to Rich's story where he was critically shot and wounded in the same SWAT operation as a SWAT operator that my best friend David Brinkerhoff was shot and killed in. Hearing Rich's story was beyond chilling, make that, making the hair stand up on the back of your neck. The amount of messages that I got, like people just said, David, I, I couldn't put it in words. And let me tell you, it affected me just as much as it affected all of you. And I had to listen to it after my interview, because when you're doing a podcast and you're doing an interview and I'm listening to Rich's story, it struck me, but I'm also making sure that I'm thinking of things to say, um, questions maybe to ask. So it's very different when you're actually doing the podcast than yesterday when I was driving in the car, just listening to Rich's story again. It, it, it warded up my eyes. I had tears in my eyes. Why? Because hearing Rich's story, hearing the heroes of the doctors and nurses and the fellow state troopers in New York and what they did to to save and rescue Rich and hearing what everybody did that day, it just, it just put, it, I can't even put it into words. So I'm just going to say that if you did not listen to it, go back and listen to it. You can watch it on YouTube, whatever platform maybe you're listening to me on now. It's on Apple, it's on Spotify, it's on all the major platforms, but definitely go check that episode out because it is super, super powerful and life-touching. But guys, with that, let's dive into my mindset is my superpower. And I came up with this, this phrase or this saying, and it, it's kind of like you know a joke, like superpower, but I really believe up until now in my life, whether it was when I had goals at you know my younger days, for those of you that have been following me, that, that journey of going to my mom and dad and wanting to get a batting cage with a pitching machine in my backyard or becoming an ocean lifeguard or moving through the ranks of the state police or even within the state police being the New York State Trooper of the Year in Troop K and being the investigator of the year and then working to be a lieutenant and then captain and at the same time getting my health in order and getting healthy and fit that opened the door to a business I didn't even know existed, a direct marketing business that helped me, you know, through hard work and discipline and grit, build a business that absolutely changed my life, which then opened the door to me being a keynote motivational speaker, something in two days from now, I'm traveling to Grand Rapids, Michigan to speak to a couple hundred people and bring my, bring my message, but that didn't happen if I didn't have the mindset, which I like to call it, is my superpower of how I operate every single day. And it's not something that I strive to be. It's something I have to work out, work on, not work on, something, yes, I have to work on every single day. But the more important piece, I want to say it's, it's who I am. It's who you are every single day. Like I'm no longer saying I need to have a strong mindset and these are the things I need to do so that I could be successful. Like I live it. This is the way I operate every single day. Like sometimes people are like, David, I couldn't do what you do. Well, let me tell you, I wasn't always this way. From a younger years as childhood, I always had the drive and the vision and the goals. Yes, I did. And I'm going to share with you 10 points that I feel are the framework to having a strong mindset, but not all of them were developed at a very young age. Some of them were there. It's constantly a growing process, but today this is who I operate. And all I'm doing now is trying to get better in every single one of these areas. So if you have goals, whatever it is, you want to you know, build a business, you want to move up in, in the corporate ladder if you're an employee, you want to go back to school, you want to get healthy and fit. I don't care what it is because these principles, these pillars that I want to share with you is what it's going to take to have a bulletproof mindset 
so that you are successful, so that it becomes your superpower, okay? So let's dive right into it. The first point is this. When it comes to having a mindset that is a superpower, the first point is, number one, vision. You have to have a vision for your life, which basically means you have to have goals and you need to dream big. Too many people wake up every single day and we go through the motions of life. We just go and repeat. We drive to work. Sometimes we don't even realize how we got from our home to work. We do the same monotonous things every single day. You're simply in survival mode, not thriving mode. You come home from work. You just simply try to get through the afternoon and evening hours with all of the activities that you have going on with your kids, or maybe you're stuck at work with overtime. You have dinner. You're either eating dinner on the go so often. You go to bed. You're exhausted. You wake up. You're on repeat. You literally rinse the same thing and you're on repeat. My friends, that's not fulfilling. Like, I'm not taking away from being a mom and dad isn't a great thing. It is a great thing. But what are your goals? Like, what are your dreams? You only get one shot at this thing called life. There is no warm-up in life. There is no practice in life. Like, you only have today. So if you're literally going through the motions of your life every single day, I'm calling you out that you're not living up to your greatest potential. You're not living up to what you were meant and called to do. And it's different for everybody. What are your gifts? What do you have? Your gift is the thing you do best with the least amount of effort. And and, and it may change over time. Like I realize a gift I have now is the ability to get up on stage and speak and inspire and motivate and share my stories to help people live their life up to their fullest potential. But my vision now is seeing myself as one of the top speakers and having that goal. But 10, 12 years ago, my vision was getting healthier and fit and not being a dad that was had a dad bod and a huge gut and was 25 pounds overweight. My vision was just to be healthy and fit so I was vibrant. And then after that, it was I was in a lot of debt and I, I was sick of living paycheck to paycheck. And yes, I was even being on the state police and having a great job because so often in life, when you make more money, you spend more money. So I knew that something needed to change. So I had a vision to earn more, to have the vision to be smart smarter with my finances. I remember reading the book, The um, Money Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey and following that and having that vision of not having the six figures in debt that I had from credit cards and student loans and poor payments and all the things. But what is your vision in your life? Like, where have you been up to this point? Why are you here and where are you going? And I say that and I say it so so with so much emotion because you literally have to be able to close your eyes and see yourself achieving that vision, those goals, like before you're even there. Like, what is your vision? What are your goals? Stop waking up every single day like it's just another day. Like, you have to have a fire in your belly. And if you don't have it, I'm giving you 10 points of what it's going to take to grow in your mindset. All right. So, number one is what is your vision? And if you're just accepting your life for what it is, instead of leading your life to where you want to go, you're going to live a life with regret. Later on in your life, you're going to have regrets looking back saying, I wish, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. So that's my point. Number one vision. Second is perseverance. It's my favorite word in the dictionary. You have to be willing to persevere through the hard times and you have to understand it's going to be a dogfight. You have to understand that whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish when you have that vision, it's going to be 10 times, 100 times, a thousand times harder than you could ever have imagined. When I think of every single goal that I want to achieve, it was so much harder. But my favorite word in the dictionary is perseverance. My direct sales team with Beachbody, our team name that I grew to 1,400 people was Team Perseverance. Why? Because we will push through hard times. Perseverance, you have to have perseverance. Stop when the wind changes direction giving up on yourself because it got hard. That's where that's where you're going to grow. It's what you do when things get hard and how you show up after you get knocked down. The third is point is this. You have to live your life with a sense of urgency. 
And that for me, my friends, is one of my main pillars that I speak about when I'm on stage. There's 86,400 seconds in a day, no more, no less. And it's what you do with the 86,400 that's going to make a difference. You don't need more time. You don't need more hours in a day. It doesn't matter who you are in this world. You just need to manage your time more effectively. You probably waste time scrolling social media, watching Netflix, doing things that aren't helping you improve your life. So when it means urgency, it's showing up every single day, not taking any day for granted. For me, when my best friend was killed, I like to say life doesn't always fire a warning shot. And there are people right now listening to this that you have these goals and dreams and things you want to do and you're waiting until next week. You're waiting until the summer. You're waiting till you have more time till your kids are out of the house. And I'm here to tell you, you may not be here tomorrow. You heard Rich's podcast for those that listened last week. You know my story with my best friend. In one minute, I was on the phone talking to him. And a week later, I was crying over him when he was deceased in the hospital. And that was my light bulb moment on life to show up every single day and realizing every single day life is a blessing. Life is a gift. And it's what you do with today that matters. And guys, you may be hearing my passion and energy in my voice because that's the way I operate in my life every single day. That's how I show up when I have goals and vision and perseverance and live with urgency. That's how I was able to achieve what I want to achieve. And I'll tell you right now, this is the way I'm operating right now to get to another level. I am not sitting still and accepting my life for what it is. Every single day, I go out there and make the best of it. So the third point is you have to have urgency. The fourth is discipline. You have to have the discipline. It's what you're doing in the dark when nobody's watching you that's going to bring you out in the light. It's what you're doing when you get up or whether you don't get up at five in the morning and nobody's there to motivate you to get up and get yourself to the gym. It's what you do at eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night when you do have the discipline to put in those extra hours for that side hustle or maybe that's your gym time or maybe that's your time to read a self-improvement book, whether it's to grow your business skill set or grow your mindset. It's what you do and having the discipline to do what you know you're supposed to do. You know what you're supposed to do. You know whether you should be eating the donuts and the sugar stuff or not. You know if whether you should be working on your business or not. You know whether you should be reading a book to help grow your mind or not. You know if you should go to the gym or not. You know it. But most of you aren't doing it. Why? Because common sense isn't always common practice. Let me say that again. Common sense isn't always common practice. You need to have discipline in your life. And there's nobody out there that's going to hold you accountable other than yourself. And sometimes in life, more times than not, you need to be your own hero. I'll say that again. You need to be your own hero. Stop waiting for your mom and dad or brother or sister or or boss or anybody else to rescue you. It's time you rescue yourself and have the discipline. Point number five, ownership. You need to take ownership of your life. You need to stop blaming everybody else for why you are where you are in your life. Stop playing the victim. Stop thinking that there's people out there in this world that don't have it as bad as you. There are people out in this world in much worse situations than you that are out there killing the game, that are succeeding. Why? Because they took ownership of their life. And let me tell you this. When you take ownership of your life, it is the most freeing feeling in the world because now nobody has control over your life. When you give other people power over you, when you let other people's opinions become your reality, and a lot of you are scared or fearful of what other people may think of you, when you allow that to happen, you are giving power to other people over you. Is that the way you want to live? Do you want to live that you're literally living your life worried about what your friend may think, your coworker may think? You know how many people laughed and joked at me when I wanted to build a direct sales business? Oh, it's a pyramid scheme and made fun of it. But you know what? I had the vision and I took ownership and I enjoyed, I laughed with it. I'm not saying I didn't laugh with it, but I didn't allow their opinions to become my reality. And you know what? I wouldn't have 
written a book and become an author or I've been speaking if I allowed that and I didn't take ownership of my life. You need take, to take ownership of your life. And it needs to be so powerful, my friends, that literally even if somebody else did something and it was 100% their fault, you still have to take responsibility for it. Just kind of like you got in a little fender bender and you know what? Somebody hit in the back of you and you're like, you know what? That person's at fault. They bumped into the back of my car and you literally have to be, but you know what? If I left two minutes earlier, I would not have gotten to that accident. Like that's how strong your ownership in your life needs to be. You have to take ownership. Guys, number six is understanding failure. Failure is... Failure is not permanent. Failure is part of the process. And you're really not failing unless you give up and stop. There's so much to learn with my daughters all the time. If they get a bad grade on a test, I said, okay, did you go back on the exam and look at what you got wrong and see why you got it wrong so you can learn from it? What can you learn from failure? Right? One of my most recent podcasts is really about failure. It's about the learning from failure and understanding that you need to embrace it, right? And you need to keep going forward. Everybody fails in their life. The only ones that truly don't face failure are the ones that are willing to never give up because they learn from it and they continue to press forward. So don't ever look at it that failure is permanent. It's only permanent if you stop. So you need to understand it and look back. Guys, point number Seven. So, so far we had vision number one, two perseverance, three urgency, four discipline, five ownership, six understanding failure. Number seven, you have to be teachable or coachable. You don't know it all. You do not know it all. So stop thinking you know it all and become teachable and coachable. Find somebody that has what you want and do what they do. Let me say that again. Find somebody that has what you want and do what they do. Why do I say that? Because success leaves clues. So if you have somebody, whether it's an author of a book or it's a podcast, or you're listening to me and you struggle with success, you constantly give up on yourself. And I'm telling you the things that it takes. And you're sitting there saying, no, you don't understand because I have this or I have that. It's it's a bunch of garbage. I'm going to tell you right now, You have to be willing to close your mouth. You have two ears and one mouth for a reason, to listen more and talk less. So you have to be coachable and teachable. Find mentors, learn from them, ask questions, and keep your mouth closed and be willing to try, okay? Because I'll tell you, sometimes, and and it was hard for me because I went through stages like this growing my business. For two years, I didn't want to hear hear it at all about reading, you know, personal development books, reading books on mindset and success and, you know, all the different things, you know, through all these authors, I pushed that rah, rah stuff is what I called it for two years. I said, I don't need this. And guess what? You can grind your way to a certain point, but eventually you're not going to get any further. Why? Because you don't know what you don't know. Let me say that again. You don't know what you don't know. When you learn something from the wisdom of others who have done it and succeeded, you know, before, then all of a sudden you have the light bulb moments and you grasp so many new things. But it only happens if you can stop being a know-it-all. So you have to be teachable. You have to be coachable. Guys, number eight is this. You have to have undeniable faith. Listen, I don't know what you believe in, but I'm a big believer in my faith and God And I, every single day, you know, faith is the belief in things you cannot see. And I believe that if I go out there every single day and I put other people first and I take this God-given gifts that God gave me, whether it was through my younger years, through being a, a law enforcement officer, a state trooper, to now being a speaker, to spread a message, to inspire the world and empower people, I truly believe if I take my god given gifts, and again, your gift is your thing you do best with the least amount of effort. We all have god given gifts. It's a thing you do best with the least amount of effort. But I, again, I believe if I put other people first and I take my god given gifts and I work my butt off because with faith comes hard work. You can't just say, I have faith. God's going to make me a millionaire and you're sitting around on your butt all day, you have to put in the work paired with undeniable faith. 
And when you take that, I 100% believe it will come back to you. It will come back to you. Are you going to have hardship? Absolutely. But every single day, part of my faith is that God has given me this superpower of a mindset that, that giving me the superpower of a mindset that I'm never going to stop that I'm going to continue to have faith. And part of it is you're going to get knocked down. You're going to have trials and tribulations in your life. God never said in the Bible that life's not going to be hard. There's going to be peaks and valleys, but it's always to focus on him, to have faith, okay? So I'm not trying to tell you what you should believe in. Maybe it's the universe, a higher calling, but I'm telling you right now, you can't do it alone. You cannot do it alone. And for me, every single day, through prayer that I have, through going to church, through all those things, every single day, I like to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right out of the Bible, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I believe that because he is my best teammate and I was given this gift. And my other thing is I want to make it about others. This podcast that I'm doing is for you guys. My focus is for other people people. So you have to have undeniable faith because there's going to be times that you're going to feel like you just can't go anymore. There's going to be times when you feel like I just, I have nothing left. There's going to be times when you're like, David, I, 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 I feel by myself, but you know what? You're not by yourself. You have God with you and you need to keep going. All right. Number nine is you need to be intentional. You need to be intentional Every single day. You don't just wake up and have discipline. You don't just wake up and take ownership of your life. You need to generate the actions to be disciplined. You need to generate the actions to take ownership. You need to generate the actions to be intentional and to have a vision. You don't just wake up with a vision one day. Like I sit down, I have my dreams. I write them down. I have vision boards. I talk about what I'm going to do. I do the work. When it was writing my book, I'm sitting down. I had the vision. I'm writing out what the chapters should be. And then I'm breaking it down to the paragraphs and I'm intentional with my actions. You don't get healthy and fit by just saying, I'm going to be healthy and fit. No, you need to do the exercise. You need to have the discipline. You need to be intentional. So you need to will yourself to do the work that it takes to reach your goals. And guys, I hope you're writing all of these things down, these points, and then you can think about them. If you're not, I'm going to repeat them at the end and just summarize, but you want to write them down and you should look at them every single day, put them in your phone, have them on the list and understand if I want to be successful and make my mindset a superpower, then in fact, I need to live by these things that I'm giving you, these pillars, these principles I'm giving you. Guys, number 10, never ever quit. Quitting is not an option. Let me tell you, for our parents out there, you think you're just quitting on yourself at a certain point in life, it's going to come back to haunt you because it's going to affect your kids as well. Why? Because your kids don't just watch what you say, they watch what you do. So when you give up on something that you said that you were going to do, let me tell you, your kids are watching. And I'm telling you, the testament to that is seeing my daughter, seeing the work ethic, seeing my daughter with ice hockey or my daughter with her acting in shows or seeing my daughter in school. They watch and they show up and act because they see how my wife and I have operated when we faced adversity. They see how we never give up. We talk about it. They saw me in the marathon training when I would make a video after running you know, 15, 17, 20 miles in the rain when I was soaking wet and would say... Atkins can do hard things. We could do hard things. Even though it rained on me, we don't give up. We keep going. And I would send that video for them to see because I want to remind them to never give up when it gets hard. Why? Because I know as they get older, they're going to get knocked down in life. And right now, we are in a society that just frustrates me because everybody's playing victim. Everybody's like, give me, give me, give me. What can the government, what can the world give me? And you know what? At the end of the day, that never works out in the end. You want to have a thriving life? You need to take ownership of your life. You need to never, ever quit. You need to have faith. You need to work hard. You need to have a vision. You got to persevere. You got to be intentional. You got to have urgency. All the things that I'm giving you, this is the truth. And most people aren't willing to share the truth because everybody's looking for the shortcut. Shortcuts don't work. Get over the microwave mentality and don't quit when things get hard. 
And my friends, my last bonus tip, number 11, or asterisk, is no excuses. Stop with the excuses. Your excuses are exhausting. Excuses are well-planned lies. Let me say that again. Excuses are well-planned lies. Stop making your kids your excuse. Your kids deserve the best of you, not what's left of you. Stop blaming them. Stop blaming you don't have enough time. You have the same amount of hours as me and everybody else in this world. Stop blaming that your life is so rough. It's an excuse. If you want something and it's important to you, you will find a way. If it's not, you will find an excuse. And excuses will never get you anywhere in your life. It's so exhausting when I hear them. And listen, I want to say this, guys. Let me just kind of, as we're wrapping up, and I'm just going to say the points again. I get knocked down too. I have trials and tribulations too. We have something called the 24-hour rule. If something horrible or tough happens with one of us, our family, my daughters, you get 24 hours to kind of be on your soapbox. Like, you know what? This stinks. It's horrible. That's okay. Because you know what? We're human. We're, it's okay to feel the emotions. I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel when you get knocked down and go through a rough patch in your life, whether it could be a sickness, a death, you don't get a promotion, you don't get a job. This all happens. Nobody's immune to it. You need to feel the emotions. We all need to feel them. But after 24 hours, you need to say, you know what? I can't allow this to become my crutch. I can't allow it to become an excuse. You can't have excuses because it's not going to get you anywhere. It really isn't. So to wrap up, guys, here are the 10 points again. And if you did not write them down, write them down. Put them in your phone. Number one, when it comes to your mindset is your superpower. You have to have a vision. Number two, you have to have perseverance. Number three, you have to live your life with a sense of urgency. Number four, you have to have discipline. Number five, you need to take ownership of your life. Number six, understanding failure. Number seven, you have to be teachable and coachable. Number eight is you have to have undeniable faith. Number nine, you have to be intentional in your life. Number 10, never ever quit. And number 11, my friends, and it's kind of the heading on my keynote presentation is no excuses. Don't have any excuses. So guys, with that, I hope this was of value to you today. Guys, do me a favor. Please, you know, give me a review. Share the episode. Leave a comment because every single day, and I know my podcast has an ending and I always say it, is to help more people get better, to help people live up to their fullest potential. But I'm one voice, but everybody that listens and everybody that watches, if this was of value to you, share it. Please send a quick text. It It costs nothing to share it. So guys, with that, thank you. Have a great day. I will talk to you guys soon. Believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And if the people around you don't believe in you, remember, I believe in you. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.